Hey everybody, Frank Spear back with you for another episode of Watch This. Today we're going to look briefly at a passage in Mark chapter 12. Now this is found in other Gospels as well, this particular saying of Jesus. We're talking again about resurrection. And I contend that the resurrection of the scriptures, primarily, is talking about coming out of covenant death. I've done a lot of videos on this, so if you want to watch my four videos on the resurrection or watch my recent videos from the past two weeks, you'll, you'll see me expound this. Um, and then you'll have a better grasp on it if you don't already. <laughs> However, coming to Mark chapter 12, verse 24, they're talking about the resurrection. The Sadducees did not believe in a biological resurrection from the dead, a uh, resurrection from biological death. And uh, I do not think Jesus uh, is answering them according to biological resurrection. I think they were mistaken in their understanding of that. And he goes on to explain to them what resurrection is. Watch this. Verse 24. Is this not the reason you are mistaken that you do not understand the scriptures? You see, they were expecting biological resurrection. Well, actually, they didn't believe in it. But the Pharisees were expecting biological resurrection. The Sadducees didn't believe in it. And Jesus is saying, he says this to the Sadducees. He says it to the Pharisees at the times. You guys don't understand the scriptures. You're making a mistake in your perspective on what the resurrection is, okay, and what it isn't. Is this not the reason you are mistaken that you do not understand the scriptures or the power of God? Verse 25, for when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. Now, I've done other videos on that, so I'm going to skip that. I believe this is in regard to the Leverite marriage laws, um, that were given to Israel under the Old Covenant system, and that were to be kept from generation to generation. That's the context of the question that the Sadducees posed to Jesus. So certainly that's what he's dealing with in his response. However, verse 26, but regarding the fact that the dead rise again, now remember, the Sadducees did not believe in a resurrection. Jesus says, oh, there's a resurrection. Let me explain it to you. But regarding the fact that the dead rise again, have you not read the scriptures? Have you not read in the book of Moses in the passage about the burning bush, how God spoke to him saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Therefore, he's not the God of the dead, but of the living, living. You are greatly mistaken, he says. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob represent Israel. They are the founding fathers, if you will, of Israel. As you read through the Old Covenant going all the way back to the early books, uh, just, I was just reading through Deuteronomy this morning, and God tells Moses that he's fulfilling in them the promises he made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the, this are, um, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are Israel. They are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They are their seed. That's how Israel viewed eternal life in their seed, their children, their posterity that kept on going. Israel wasn't cut off as a nation. They did not end as a nation at this point. They are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They are their children. So in essence, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob live. You see, that's how the Hebrews understood that eternal life. This is crucial to understand. You, as you read um, the writings, the teachings of the rabbis, the ancient rabbis, they understood it this way. This is the way they understood it, and they ought to know better than we do. When you read the ancients, they understood that the Jews, the Israelites, viewed eternal life in their posterity, right? God promised that if they would obey him, that he would continue to bless them and Israel would become like the sand of the seashore, the stars in the heavens. That was the way they continued on. And that was their eternal life. So Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the way Jesus uses it here is referring to Israel. He's saying to the Sadducees, in essence, don't you understand that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob still live in you, in the Israelite peoples? God is saying, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm the God of Israel. 
Okay? But regarding the fact that the dead rise again, have you not read in the book of Moses, in Exodus here, in the passage about the burning bush, how God spoke to Moses saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? Uh, Jesus puts this in the context of being raised from the dead. Where were they? Where were the Israelites when God spoke to Moses from the burning bush? They were in captivity, in bondage in Egypt as slaves. Where does Paul in Galatians say that the Israelites, the, the Jews, specifically were at the time of the, in the New Testament era? They were in bondage. They were in slavery to Judaism. Let alone Rome, literally, right? They were literally in bondage to Rome. However, the, new, the, the book of Revelation, now catch this here, pay attention, watch this. The book of Revelation refers to Jerusalem, the headquarters of Judaism, apostate Judaism. It refers to it as Egypt. Why? Because just like the Israelites were in bondage in Egypt under, in, during the Old Testament times, during the Exodus period, and they were coming out from that bondage, so too were these first century Jews in bondage to apostate Judaism, which the book of Revelation calls Egypt. And they were coming out, the redeemed, just like you had those come out of Egypt, right? Wander in the desert for 40 years, then enter their promised land. In the same way you have Jesus as a second Moses, if you will, bringing the remnant, the 144,000 of Revelation 7 and 14, out from apostate Judaism, Egypt. Forty years they wander, right? Jesus ascends. Forty years later he returns. That's that gospel period. It's the calling out as Moses was calling out Israel from Egypt. Come out from under Pharaoh, right? The serpent, right? They were calling out these Israelites out from under the high priest and that system of apostate Judaism, the serpents, you see, this is a second exodus in the New Testament. And so they were in bondage, in slavery, dead in Egypt, cut off from God in the way that God had intended, right? Remember, when they were in trouble before they were in bondage in Egypt, they would go down to Egypt for help and God didn't like that. He said, why do you go down to Egypt instead of asking me? And for that and a myriad of other reasons, he put them in bondage in Egypt for 400 and something years. Now he was taking them out. So he says to Moses from the burning bush, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm the God of the Israelites who are in bondage. To me, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are living in them. And I'm about to bring you out of that death in Egypt. And I'm going to bring you out from there and bring you into life, into covenant with me. That's the, that's the crux, that's the resurrection that Jesus is talking about here. The same thing was about to happen. We're bringing out the slaves, those in bondage, into freedom of the new covenant, out from the bondage of the old covenant system. Read Galatians again. That's how Jesus is viewing the resurrection. He's not the God of the dead, verse 27, but of the living. Living. You are greatly mistaken, he says. Okay, so the cut off people of Israel, out of covenant, let's put it even more simply, the sinful Israelites are considered dead to God. But he says, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm the God of the living. And so there is a remnant, the true children of Abraham, right? Just like Paul talks about Galatians, who were the true children of Abraham? Not just anybody because they're an Israelite, because they have the blood of Abraham coursing through their veins. No, you're a true child of Abraham by faith. And that was the remnant that was coming out from the old covenant system. That's the resurrection from, from the resurrection in uh, the Old Covenant, or in the book of Exodus, let's put it that way, that resurrection was coming out of the death of bondage in Egypt into the life of covenant fellowship with God. The resurrection of the New Testament is similar in that it was coming out from the bondage and the slavery to the apostate Judaism, system of Judaism, that world. They were coming out of that Egypt, right? That's why the book of Revelation calls uh, Jerusalem Egypt, a sinful city, a wicked city. 
They were coming out of that bondage and into new covenant fellowship with God in the new covenant. That's the resurrection. That's the from death to life transfer that Jesus and the rest of the New Testament authors were talking about. Thanks for your time today, guys. Well, before I get out of here today, let me add this. That Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were the righteous Israelites. They were the ones who ex exuded, is that, a, is that a right word here? Faith in God and trust in God. They were the representative of the righteous of Israel. So Jesus is here, here is saying, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living, right? He's not the God of the unrighteous, but the righteous of Israel. He's not the God of all of Israel. He's the God of the righteous of Israel. That's the point. That's the point Paul makes over and again in his writings, right? He says, you, the true sons of Abraham are the ones that are of the faith of Abraham, the ones that trust God, believe God like Abraham did, and he was declared righteous. The true righteous ones of Israel, the living ones of Israel, the ones that are in true covenant with God and not cut off from covenant, who are not dead, the dead ones among the Israel, the true righteous ones, living ones, are the ones who have the faith that Abraham had, that Isaac had, that Jacob had. That's Jesus' point here. He's God is not the God of the dead, right? The unspiritual, unrighteous, unfaithful Israelites, but he's the God of the living Israelites who have the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the resurrection he's talking about here. The resurrection of coming out from among that uh, apostate group and becoming the living ones, the resurrected ones, the new creation saints in the new kingdom. All right, that'll do it. See you guys next time.